Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial for including partial differential equations in PMC free model. My name is Ivan Yashuk. I'm a doctoral candidate in Alta University in probabilistic machine learning group. So let's start. What uh, So what is the partial differential equation? It's an equation which imposes some relationships of the partial derivatives of multivariable function. It's simply as it is. Uh, that's a mathematical defini definition of it. And if we solve a PDE, that means we are trying to find the, a function which satisfies this equation. And in analogy to the familiar, I hope, to everyone, uh, algebraic equation, that's then we, when we solve this equation, we are trying to find a number x that would satisfy it. PDEs are really ubiquitous in modern physics and engineering. It's being applied to model various physical phenomena like um, heat flow, fluid flow, um, electricity uh, and many other things used in weather prediction, uh, design of planes and everything nowadays. In this uh, tutorial we are going to look at a very simple PDE um, from the solid mechanics that this um, simulates and models uh, elasticity phenomenon. Solid object is elastic, is when we apply to a low, some load to it, and we remove the load. This our solid object um, returns to its original shape. So the elastic materials behave like like spring. Uh, since this is a PMC free tutorial, we are of course interested in Bayesian inference for PDE based models. And when we talk about um, a kind of parameter estimation of PDE based model, uh, in the literature, this is usually the traditionally called an inverse problem in contrast to the forward problem or primal problem uh, our forward problem is our normal PDE and that means if we have all the parameters so all the knowledge about the physical system we can very much in most of the cases uniquely predict what would be the state of this system under certain conditions. While the inverse problem is, if we have some measurements about the system, we are trying to estimate or predict what other parameters which would give our certain observations. And the inverse problem is ill-posed because there are infinitely many parameters that would give us the same observation that we see. Therefore, we need to, to use some prior information on the model parameters. So in, in Bayesian inference, it's also important that we get, uh, we can estimate the uncertainty of our parameter estimation and it gives us some more conf confidence in our analysis. So, applying of Bayesian statistics to inverse problem really started with Albert Tarantola, to my knowledge, and he published a book in 1987, and I, like, if you're interested in this topic, I really suggest you to take a look at it, and he has a newer book, which was published in the beginning of 2000s. 
that's um, that, that uses mathematical language, but it's not heavy on mathematics. Um, I if you prefer some um, really rigorous uh, mathematical approach, and the ways and perspective to inverse problems is described really well from the point of view of mathematics by Andrew Stewart in these two papers. And there is another book that I highly recommend to read. It's called Introduction to Bayesian Scientific Computing by Eric Sommersawa and Daniela Calvetti. So, we need to solve partial differential equations. That's usually a complicated task because most of the interesting partial differential equations do not have some analytical solution. Therefore, we need to solve it somehow numerically. And if we try to implement... And there was a lot of work done in the past in the world of PDE solvers. And if you try to re-implement this work in PyMC, Oh, Fiano, then it would require quite a lot of time and most certainly won't be efficient. Therefore, um, the suggested approach is to use a library which has, which was specifically designed for solving PDEs and in this tutorial we are going to look at the library called Phoenix that's a very popular library, which is like the backend is written in C++ and it has many components written in Python and kind of what the user faces, like the front end of the program is in Python. And Phoenix includes its own domain, domain Phoenix includes its own domain specific language so that it lets like helps the users um, to translate mathematical models, mathematical equations efficiently to the code. And then this Python code gets compiled uh, to C++, therefore it's very efficient. And Phoenix itself has an interface to other libraries which are specifically designed for solving matrix equations. So if you open any if you open any textbook on finite element methods, the first problem that you will find there is so-called Poisson problem. That's considered a hello world ta task in the world of finite elements. And the Poisson problem is stated as follows: We need to find a function u in some function space that satisfies this equation. And left hand side of this equation is this integral which involves the some derivatives of the equation that we are trying to find. And V V is called um, a test function. It, it's not required to understand all the terms now and when we take a look at the code, we will see that it's quite a, straight, a straightforward way to go from the textbook definition, textbook statement of the problem into the Python code. Then uh, right hand side of the equation um, includes another integral with the f. f is usually called a source term which um, physically can represent uh, some heating or cooling in case of um, heat equation. If we look at some solid mechanics equations, then it can represent um, some loading, contact, or anything else, like any, any sort of action um, that is being exerted on the body. Then for partial differential equations, we always need to provide some boundary conditions. 
and here we choose the like the basic boundary condition that we require this function u to be zero on the boundaries. Then in Phoenix code, this problem is translated into this, and this is the whole program to solve the Poisson equation, and it can run efficiently on the laptop or even in the supercomputers like th the same Python code and on the supercomputers are needed when you have really large domain if you would have like here millions of elements then so first we declare the mesh and our domain so in this case our domain is a union square and the mesh is the 10 by 10 elements then we need to define a function space and something called trial and test functions and here we define our equation which is if you compare to these definitions you will see that it quite closely follows mathematics and then we define it boundary condition that so-called directly boundary conditions you don't need to remember all of, all of it now and in the end we call the function solve we give our equation the solu like solution where to store the solution and boundary conditions and we get something like this so if you ever saw the Poisson equation solve then you are not surprised at this point and if you first encounter PDEs now, then you're probably very confused. But this is actually the function that satisfies the equation that we prescribed here. And at least we can see now clearly that it has zero values on the boundaries. So at least there is some hope that we got actually something that we are that we were looking for um, phoenix is really um, kind of it's not a library of ready-made models and of course like you can find quite a lot of them in the internet and phoenix itself has uh, some many demos and tutorials that cover quite many uh, differential equations so if you're interested in some kind of specific field then i suggest just google phoenix and electromagnetism and uh, phoenix maxwell equations like or phoenix navia stokes equations and whatever you find useful for for your interests so the very first step in solving any PDE, you need to define what is the domain that it, where you solve your equation. And Phoenix uses um, a method called finite element method, and it requires to dis discretize. It requires discretization of the domain. So if we consider um, unit square then we subdivide it into smaller triangles so elements, finite elements and the collection of these triangles forms a mesh so in, in Phoenix we can generate this mesh using these commands and we can actually plot it that's what we see here so that's the first basic block of any solver then phoenix allows us to define function spaces and functions from these function spaces there are many different function spaces that suit different differential equations the basic one is called continuous galerkin or lagrangian polynomials or piecewise linear function piecewise continuous functions um, if you have never encountered some kind of approximation uh, 
theory of, of functions and you don't know any of them um, so basically this means that uh, we, rep we can represent um, our function on the domain if we consider only um, local interpolations in a triangle and these interpolations are linear And then if we define a function, then we define a function for each vertex in the mesh. And this will give our discretized representation of the function. So in Phoenix, if we define the function space first, that's the most basic one and probably most of the PDEs use some kind of variant of continuous hierarchy. Then we can uh, get symbols for x and y uh, coordinates of the mesh and we can write pretty much uh, not any uh, expression but many mathematical operators are supported and then w once we have written our expression we can um, represented in this function space using this command and then we plot the result so this is this function has the name of Rosenbrock function and here's the link to Wikipedia if you're interested in some more details and here so we get the Rosenbrock function on our mesh and here the solution is very smooth because it gets interpolated by matplotlib and yeah that's that's functions and functions can be also vector functions if that's needed for your dom dom domain of interest or it can be tensor functions as well so there are many possibilities So once we have the function, then we can apply some post-processing to it. What is usually being done is that um, these functions that we get uh, from Phoenix are, are saved to the file and open in some other software and usually part of you. That's a software for scientific visualization. Within Python, you also have some possibilities of post-processing. You can evaluate the function at any point. And you can also evaluate integrals of, of the functions. And in, in Phoenix, we, we have the symbolic um, kind of representation of the infinitesimal element. And the, if we want to evaluate the integral, we need this command assemble. Then we assemble the integral where we multiply x with y. And if we integrate our Rosenbrock function, then we get this value. So that's a short kind of introduction to Phoenix with all the basic concepts that are needed to start doing something. So now with all the basics of Phoenix, we can take a look at our example and we are going to look at the elasticity equation to model a cantilever beam. Cantilever beam is something that you have uh, fixed at one end in this case, you will have a fixed one end and other end is free and we look at the deflection of this beam under the distributed loading. So we define the parameters of our domain and our domain will have the length of 25 units and we don't have now any 
kind of specific physical units for now just some units 25 units in length and height is one unit and we divide this domain into 25 elements in x direction and one element in y direction and generate the mesh which looks like this now um, a bit of now here's the description of our model um, I certainly don't try to understand what is going on here now if you're not familiar with solid mechanics um, so but elasticity model is very closely related to Hooke's law from high school physics for springs and but that's kind of spring analogy for solid bodies that behave like a spring and we have some kind of laws elasticity laws how the body should behave and now we use these laws uh, to write our equation so we have here something that is called a stress tensor and strain tensor epsilon and this is the relationship epsilon um, in code is the symmetrized gradient of uh, some vector function uh, okay it's really not needed to understand all of this but once we have implemented this all in code which is not a long program and here we have our problem that we are trying to solve uh, so this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side which is being translated to phoenix with this lines lines of code notice again here's our left hand left hand side and right hand side of the equation which quite closely follows the mathematical statement then we prescribe the boundary condition that it's zero the displacement is zero on the left end so this is fixed and we, we define our we create our function to store the solution and call solve now we can plot how it looks like and we get something that we expect by intuition so this end is fixed and the load is applied distributionally across like the whole body and from top to bottom it goes and the maximum deflection is at this end there is a theory called euler bernoulli beam theory that is specifically developed for for beams and this theory tells us that the maximum deflection has this formula and if we apply it and compare it to the value that we get we see that we get something which is quite close to the theoretical value so that's a screenshot from wikipedia how we have our cantilever beam with the distributional load q um, and then uh, the deflection what we are now simulating looks like this it has um, formula like for the which you can evaluate at any point and also the maximum maximum deflection is given by this formula So it's now we have solved the elasticity problem for the for the beam. It's really useful now to wrap it in a function. In normal Python function, we declare some 
some variables outside and then define the function call which we, which I call solve elasticity which takes um, parameter e Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity and variable rho g that represents our loading the distributed loading and the equations are defined inside and are being solved and we return the solution so here we define the function which takes parameters and returns a solution that corresponds to these parameters in this form now it will be really convenient to use it in PyMC free model as in PyMC free model we would generate um, parameters according to some prior distribution pass it to the solve elasticity and get the solution back but then um, because PyMC free uses um, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo it requires also derivatives with respect to the parameters so we need something to co to calculate the derivatives of w in this case with respect to the parameter e and rho g and there is an extension to phoenix that's called dolphin adjoint or phoenix adjoint it has like many names it's, it might be difficult to follow what is what at first but what it does it um, extends Phoenix with the automatic differentiation capability and it kind of builds a computational gra graph behind the scenes and then evaluates it and builds um, like, like uses uh, derivative rules to calculate all the gradients that that are required it does that uh, something with something called adju adjoint method or in automatic differentiation that's a uh, reverse mode automatic automatic differentiation it also has some capabilities for the forward mode and if you uh, but it's not required to use dolphin adjoint at all um, to differentiate phoenix models because um, the phoenix language uefl already has um, capability to derive all the required uh, derivatives equations that are needed for the automatic differentiation and if you're interested how to implement that without using dolphin adjoint i recommend looking at the project that i did of uh, coupling chucks library with the phoenix and here in this tutorial we are going to use dolphin adjoint because it it makes the code a bit um, easier for new users so um we have calculated the equation to the elasticity let's say we now want for some reason to evaluate this integral and we are, and this will be one real value so this is our loss function and we are trying to optimize the parameters e and rho g so to optimize them we need to find the derivatives of g with respect to their uh, input parameters to the elasticity equation if now in code we will use the import pyre joint and define these variables call the our solver we get our w the solution then we evaluate the integral and if everything is fine and was done correctly until this point then we can call a function from pygen called compute gradient and we ev evaluate the gradient of g with, with respect to the rho g and we, give, we get some number so this um, 
functions uh, I used behind the scenes then to build uh, Fiano um, Fiano OP that calls um, Phoenix and using Dolphin adjoint evaluates all the required derivatives and passes that information like further into the computer like Fiano computational graph that is used in PyMC3. So I, I developed a short package. It's really a hundred lines of code, even less because there are like a lot of spaces and, and a few comments and you can take a look at it, how it's implemented. But from the user point of view, you need only one function, create Phoenix Fiano OP. So that creates a Fiano compatible routine that can be used inside PyMC3 model. Uh, for this, we need to define something that I call templates. That's just uh, type definitions for our variables that are used to like to pass to to the function solve elasticity. In our case, we have two constant variables. The other choice would be a function. So. We call create Phoenix Fiano OP, give the templates, give the function, give our Phoenix function that we implemented, and we get in return another function, which is assigned to the variable Fiano Fem Solver. So now this Fiano Fem Solver can be used in PyMC3 model. That's all the manipulations. And until this point, everything was in Phoenix world and all the types and what all you do it it was in, in phoenix and this is the step into pymc free world um this create Fian, Fi, uh, phoenix fiano p function has this kind of double invocation because uh, so that it can be also used as a python decorator and the use of it like here Now, we have looked at the Phoenix basics. We have solved the elasticity equation for the beam, which gives quite close answer to the analytical solution. Now, let's build a simple PyMC3 model for finding the parameters, this continuum mechanics model. So, this is the code. Let's break it down. This is the usual PyMC3 imports. And let's say we have some measurements now. Somebody like prepared a, a laboratory specimen and applied some designed loads, which are these precise numbers, and obtained the measurements of this numbers these units and then the goal of the of the experiment is to find out what is the modulus of elasticity of the specimen that is being considered okay we have done the measurements and we have our computational model let's build a pymc model to find out what is the young's modulus or modulus of elasticity e Let's say we, we believe that it should be normally distributed with the mean of this value and standard deviation of this value. Uh, here we need to specify the shape of one uh, if we pass the constants because uh, currently um, the interface that has been developed doesn't work with scalars, so it always works with vectors and the constant is the vector of size 1. Then we create the list to store the 
solutions, the deflections. And in the for loop, we call to our Fiano wrapper of the Phoenix solver and we pass Jan's modulus and our loading. So once we get some kind of predicted displacement for these parameters, we find out what is the maximum. Oh, it should be minus here. So because uh, the loading is going down and we need... Um, I will So now uh, we simulate the predicted displacement using our Fiano FEM solver and passing the values that PyMC generates. Evaluate the maximum of this dis displacement and append it to the list. Then we stack it to pass it to our noise model. So we compare our deflections that we get here simulated to our observations. So this is it. This is our PyMC free model. Very simple and could be wrong one. I'm not an expert in PyMC, but anyway, we can the most simplest inference button in PyMC is find map. So maximum a posteriori estimate. And we get this value. Okay, this is something. Then of course not sampler also works. Here I just for the demonstration run uh, not many chains. And we get this estimate for the mean. A bit higher value than the map estimate, but still this is fine. This is what PyMC gives us. I will tell you now that the map estimate value, like this value was actually used to generate the measurements and I think if I had a longer chain, then uh, nuts would also give a number close to this one. This is what we have. Okay, but then we solved a really simple problem for which we had an analytical solution and we could use this solution to calculate from our measurements what would be the estimate of Young's models. And using the formula it will it gives us this value. That is not correct because I know that at least the map estimate was correct, but the reason is because our measurements contain some noise. And this is the kind of lucky situation that we had an analytical solution and we can kind of compare the estimates to this one. We see that even analytical solution fails because in real world we have noise in the measurements. It all works. Here, PyMC free model, great. Phoenix, also great. And now that's all that I have for you to show. And the feedback and questions are very much welcome either during the live session or if you, while experimenting, find some bug, file it please using GitHub issues. And for the general discussion, we can use PyMC discourse forum. And just go and learn Phoenix and apply some nice Bayesian inference analysis to it. And 
this material is available here using this link and there, there will be also a github repository with, with the code that you can run interactively thank you very much